Hey, thank you so much for joining me for a postnatal yoga class. This was a uh, class re request I received online. Um, although it's been a while, I have had three kids of my own, so I do remember uh, some of the issues that you deal with uh, right after having a baby. So be mindful um, starting your yoga routine. So if you're really fresh, right, just had a baby, um, make sure that you have recovered uh, your pelvic floor and abdominal wall before you start this practice. This is going to assist you in moving in that direction, but again, make sure that you're in a strong, stable position before you start uh, practicing yoga. Again, this is going to be a very gentle class, and I'm going to give lots of suggestions so you can kind of add on based on um, where you're at physically in this moment. So I hope you enjoy this class. Go ahead and come to a seated position. So of course, after having a baby, one thing that's really nice is for you to be able to take some time for yourself. So even if it's just some breaths seated uh, in, in a quiet space, um, that's a great place to start. So let's do that now. So comfortable position, whatever that looks like for you in the legs. You can always support yourself on a, on a pillow or a block if this, the hips are tight. Find a tall spine, reach up through the crown of your head so you're lengthened and your shoulders are over your hips and just close your, close your eyes. And right away, just check in with the quality of your breath. And just take a mental scan here of your body. And really begin to recognize where you're holding on to tension or tightness. Oftentimes, especially with a baby, that might be in our shoulders. So we can take a roll of the shoulders away from the ears. And begin to shape your breath, moving into a more rhythmic pace of your breath. So inhaling equally into your nose and exhaling equally out of your nose. While we settle into our space and work into our breath, let's just take some time here to um, focus in on our pelvic floor. So our root lock right at the base um, of our spine, we want to begin to engage that. This can also be very challenging after having a baby. So we're kind of working towards strengthening these mu muscles in our pelvic floor. So if you don't know what that feels like, just imagine that you're um, stopping the flow of urine. Okay, so you're gonna tighten up and then you're gonna release. And just continue to do this and see if you can take about 20 repetitions of this exercise. Okay, so we really, again, want to strengthen our pelvic floor even before we begin to strengthen our abdominal wall. But this is going to assist us in that direction. So focus on your breath and then go into this movement. So tightening and releasing. If your legs are crossed, you can go ahead and switch out the cross of your legs. And we're going to be here just for a little while longer. If you're really working into your pelvic floor movements and you feel like that's enough and you're done, just sit again in silence and listen to your breath. Otherwise, we'll take about 10 more here.
One more breath. Let's begin to stretch our neck and our shoulders. Bring your left hand off to the side. Take your fingertips to the floor. Take your right hand to the top of your head and gently draw your right ear toward your right shoulder. You can really actively reach those left fingertips a little bit further away. Come back towards center and switch it out. So extend your right hand to the right. Take your left hand to the top of your head and draw your left ear towards your left shoulder. Walk those fingertips a little bit further away. And then come back towards center. And then just take both hands to the floor and just a slight jut of your chin forward and then toward your sternum. So you're gonna get a really big stretch through your, the back of your neck and your upper back. And come back towards center. We're gonna take a chest expansion to open up our shoulders and our chest. So you're just gonna take your hands behind your back, press them down toward the floor, maybe lift your chin off of your chest and then hinge forward and release your forehead toward the floor. So if you're pretty tight, th this might look today just like this for you. That's fine. Okay, just working in that direction. Again, holding a baby, nursing a baby, feeding a baby. We do a lot of rounding our shoulders forward, so it's really important to draw them back. So we really want to focus on that chest opening, whatever that looks like for you today. If you're forward, you can come all the way back up. And then just take your, release your hands, take your left arm across the center of your body, take your right hand to the back of your left shoulder. Now draw your left shoulder in and down. And then we'll switch sides. So bring your right hand across your body, left hand to the back of your right shoulder, right shoulder in and down. And then we're gonna continue with some chest and shoulder opening toward the end of our class. So for now, just release your hand and make your way toward tabletop position. We're gonna move through some cats and cows just to warm up our spine. This should feel good, again, opening through your chest. So with your breath, release your belly down, lift your tailbone and the crown of your head up, and then round as you breathe out. Inhale to cow. Nice, long, slow exhale as you round your back into cat. One more of each. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come back to tabletop position. Let's take a spinal twist now. So take your right hand toward the center of your mat, lift your left arm up, open, and then slide your left arm behind your right. Come down onto your left shoulder and left ear. On your next breath in, reach your left arm up and then let's open the chest again. So take your left hand toward your right hip, roll your left shoulder open. Unwind and release. We'll take it on the other side for the, tw for the spinal twist. Take your right arm up, slide your right arm behind your left, come onto your right shoulder and right ear. And then on your next breath in, unwind. And take your right hand behind your left hip. Open your right shoulder. Unwind, release tabletop position. Let's take a hip stretch here. So bring your knees wide on your mat, touch your big toes. Take your hips toward your heels and walk your hands forward. Rest your forehead on the mat. Listen to your breath. 
Inhale through your nose. Exhale, let it go. Breathe in. And of course, you can go at your own pace, but see if you can hear your breath here. So sometimes parenting early on, while well, parenting all the time, can be um, a little bit stressful or challenging in moments. If you can access your breath and slow it down and regulate it, it's going to bring you a greater sense of calm and ease in the moment. So this is a great pr place to practice, especially because you can hear your breath. Make your way back through tabletop position. And then tuck your toes under and come into downward facing dog. This is gonna be a great stretch for the backs of your legs. And if it feels really tight, releasing your heels toward the floor, just bend your legs and lift your heels. And press your chest back. Very little to no tension in your neck. You should be able to wobble your head and shake it yes and no. And of course, here in Downward Facing Dog, you can find movement. You can pedal out your legs. So as you take this time for yourself, just ask yourself what your body needs in this moment. And take those movements. Really connecting back into your body. Take one more breath. Bring your feet to touch. Lift your right leg high. And let's open the hip and bend the leg. So stretching through your entire right side. Lift your right knee higher. Keep equal weight in both hands. And then straighten your leg. Square off your hips and release downward facing dog, but bring your feet together in this variation of down dog. And we're gonna take it on the other side. So lift your left leg. Open your hip, bend your leg. Left knee lifts high, left toes reach toward the floor. Equal weight in both hands. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then straighten your leg, square your hips. Release downward facing dog, and then just start to walk your feet toward the front of your mat. Come into ragdoll, so rest your torso on your thighs. Take opposite hand toward opposite elbow and then gently sway side to side. You can bend and straighten your legs. So we're slowly working into a more active hamstring stretch. Complete your exhale. And then heel toe your feet together, release your hands to the floor, roll up to standing. On your next breath in, bring your arms up overhead. You're gonna encircle your left wrist with your right hand. I'm gonna take a side bend. So lean to the left, or lean to the right. Keep your left shoulder in line with your left hip. And then just kind of create a little more traction here by gently drawing your left fingertips further toward the right wall. Keep your core engaged. And then come back towards center and switch it out. So left hand around your right wrist. And then side bend to the left. Keep your right shoulder in line with your right hip. Keep your core engaged. And then continue to breathe in and out through your nose. 
and come back towards center. We're gonna take our hands behind our back again for another chest expansion. So in this chest expansion, we're getting bonus. So you're gonna take your hands behind your hips, press your fists down toward the floor, lift your gaze, and then we're gonna get the hamstring stretch as well. So coming into a deeper forward bend, hinge at your hips, and then release, bringing your hands up and over the back of your head. This time we're working in the direction of straight legs. It's okay if they're still bent. We're just more actively stretching our hamstrings as we get the bonus of this chest expansion with it. So to increase the stretch in your chest, you can press the palms of your hands toward each other. And again, if your chest expansion just looks like this, that's okay. We're just working in that direction. So just feel the stretch in your own body. One more breath. And then come all the way back up, releasing your hands on the way. Reach your arms up. And cactus your arms. Draw your elbows down, lift your chest, lift your chin. Inhale. And then bring your hands to your heart. Anjali Mudra. Close your eyes, take three breaths. So just feel your connection through your feet to the earth. You can spread your toes wide, create a solid foundation, and just really drop in to this standing posture, grounded, solid, tall, centered. One more breath. And just let your breath bring you to the present moment. Open your eyes. Keep your right foot toward the front of your mat, your heel in line with your toes, and then just step your left foot back. Okay, so again, postpartum, we're starting to build stamina and strength again. And um, warrior two is usually a nice accessible pose for most people. So go ahead and make your way into warrior two. You're gonna want your left heel angled back and then sink into your front leg. Your hips and shoulders are open to the side. Extend your arms long. And then you can take a soft gaze out over your front fingertips. We're gonna hold this pose, so again, working toward strengthening our legs and bring your awareness again to your pelvic floor. So draw up and in on your root lock and then engage your core center. So draw your belly button back toward your spine and then find that one pointed focus right across your fingertips. You can even let your, your gaze kind of blur and soften. And can you find that equal balance of effort and ease here? So staying engaged in your legs, but softening your face, softening your breath. And if this is your first yoga class back and you need to take a break, we're just building strength, building stamina. It takes time, so you can always take a break with your arms, you can take a break with your leg, but then see if you can come back into it. Can you commit to the pose for three more breaths? Release your arms, and then just step your left foot to meet your right at the front of your mat. Give your legs a little bit of a wiggle and your shake. 
and then just let that side go. And we're going to take it on the other side. So I'm just going to face the opposite direction, but you can stay where you are. Keep your left foot where it is and step back with your right foot. Set yourself up for a successful warrior two. So make sure that your heel is aligned behind your toes, that your stance is long enough that when you sink into your lunge, you're going to bring your left knee right over your left ankle. Shoulders and hips are open to the side. Extend your arms long. Bring your chin toward your shoulder and then try to relax your shoulders away from your ears. One single pointed focus out across the front fingertips and an equal effort between strength and softness, effort and ease. Can you stay engaged in your legs, stay engaged in your arms, but soften in your face, soften in your breath, soften in your thoughts? We're building strength, we're building stamina. So be kind to yourself, take a break where it's needed. And if you continue to practice and you hold this pose longer each time, the strength will come and the stamina will come. Can you hold the pose, commit to the lunge for three more breaths? All right, step your right foot to meet your left at the front of your mat. Give your legs, your ankles, your hips, a little bit of a shake and a wiggle. And then on your next deep breath in, lift your arms up overhead. Cactus your arms again, opening through your chest. Breathe in, lift your arms up. And this time we're gonna hinge at our hips, reach our arms off to the side and come into a forward fold. Plant your hands on the floor and step back to downward facing dog. Come down onto your knees, cross over your ankles, and then we're going to make our way onto our backs. So we're going to do a little bit of core work. And again, if you are right um, fresh after having your baby, it's probably best to wait at least uh, six weeks until you get pretty active in the core, unless you had a really strong practice going in, um, and then probably like eight weeks for a C-section. But we're gonna do really gentle pelvic tilts. So come onto your back. You can rest your arms alongside your body. So draw your belly button back toward your spine. So it's coming down toward the floor, inhale. And then exhale, peel your tailbone off the floor. It's gonna be a pretty subtle movement. Inhale, release. And exhale, draw your belly button down toward the floor. Feel your tailbone off the floor. Inhale. And again. So continue to breathe and then rock your pelvis. 
And again, you're not going to see a lot. It's very subtle, but hopefully you're feeling it. And this is a gentle way to begin to strengthen your core again. Now, bring your awareness and your attention to your root lock again. Might be a little bit challenging to focus on both, but if you can, continue to draw up and in on your pelvic floor. And again, we want a strong pelvic floor as we begin to engage our core again. Five more. and rest, let your knees fall toward one another. And again, this is your practice, so if you want to, if you're at a place where you can up-level your core work, of course, feel free to do that. This is just kind of guiding you from um, just the bringing your yoga practice back to life after having a baby. Take another breath. And then draw your knees into your chest. Rock the length of your spine and come up to a seat. I'm gonna take another um, chest and shoulder opener, which is great if, again, we're holding baby, nursing baby, feeding baby, or carrying car seat. I did a, quite a number on my own body carrying my three kids in car seats on both sides. So, it's really important that we stay open. We're gonna do cow face pose. So you can add the hips to it if you'd like. I'm gonna guide you through that. For the hips, you're just gonna take your left knee on bottom, right knee on top. We're working towards stacking the knees. Keep both sitting bones grounded on the floor. Otherwise, you can take a comfortable seat, whatever works for you right now. And then for the, our arms, we're gonna take our right arm up and over, our left arm behind for the clasp. Only take the clasp if you can keep your head in line with your spine. So if this is not accessible to you yet, take your left hand to the top of your right elbow. Or if you have a strap or something similar available to you, you can always hold on to a strap behind your back and start to work your hands towards one another. Continue to breathe. Maybe close your eyes. And release your arms, release your legs and switch them out. So you're gonna bring your right knee on bottom toward the center of your mat. Your left knee is gonna stack on top. And then you're gonna bring your left arm up and over, right arm behind. So it might be different on this side. You can take any of those variations I already presented to you. And then just settle in sitting bones grounded on the floor, lengthened through your spine, and head is in line with your spine. So again, if you take the clasp and you're hunched over like this, this is not gonna be effective for your body. So take any variation that you need to, to keep your spine upright. And then close your eyes. If you feel comfortable, relax your jaw. And take another breath.
and release your arms release your legs and come into butterfly pose for a hip stretch. So bring the soles of your feet together. Bring your hands around your ankles, sit upright, and then keeping your spine upright and long, start to hinge forward, taking your elbows towards your knees and reaching the crown of your head forward. Release if you're folded forward, and go ahead and release your legs. All right, so we're gonna close our class. I'm gonna give you um, two versions of Shavasana, or you can take uh, just traditional Shavasana, laying flat on your back, palms face up, feet fall open. If you are really tight and tense in your shoulders and your neck, you can take block, or something similar that you might have at home. And you can place it for a supported fish pose. So this is just gonna be a nice passive way to open up your chest and shoulders. So you're gonna lay back on the block and you're gonna place the block right basically between your shoulder blades. Lay back and then rest your head back Open your chest, open your arms, and let your feet fall open. Okay, so this is variation number one with a nice passive chest opener. Ah, this one feels really good. If you find that you're dizzy with your head um, reaching back toward the back, prop it up either on another block, pillow, whatever you have, because you're still gonna get the chest and shoulder opener, okay? And then last variation, which is the one I most highly recommend because it's very, very restorative and help be, um, will assist you in relaxing before bedtime. So if you can actually practice this before bedtime, um, even on your bed, if you have a space for it, we're gonna take legs up the wall pose. So legs up the wall pose is also an inversion and it reverses the flow of blood and uh, really calms the nervous system and the heart. So for legs up the wall pose, you're gonna obviously need a wall. You just bring your mat to the wall and you're gonna bring your hips to the wall first in order to get into legs up the wall pose. So you'll just bump them up against the wall and then you're gonna lay down on your back and reach your feet straight up. So you can just relax the weight of your heels against the wall and you can relax your arms alongside your body. Now, again, make this pose super comfy and relaxing. So you can prop a pillow underneath your hips if that feels good. You can bend your legs if that feels more restorative. If you're super flexy and it feels really good to you and you wanna add in an inner thigh stretch, you can straddle your legs. So this feels good to me, but this might not feel good to everybody. If it feels like any sort of stress or strain, don't take this variation. Because we're focused more on the restorative aspect of the pose, not on the stretch aspect. But that's just another option for you. So settle into your variation of Shavasana. And I know that it's hard to take this time for yourself with probably a list of things to do, but this is one of the most important times of your yoga practice. So if you can, 
do some movement, do some breath work, but then take those final moments to lay in stillness and in quiet. And in Shavasana, in any variation of your Shavasana, let go of your breath too, so no more breath work. It's supposed to be completely restorative, rejuvenating, and restful. So no tension, nothing to do, nothing to think about, nothing to focus on. Just try to be present in this moment, in this space that you've taken for yourself. And just be an observer of your thoughts. Be an observer of your physical body and of your energy. Maybe just take a moment to recognize the difference that you feel after taking some time for yourself, after stretching your body, after strengthening your body. I highly encourage you to take between seven and 10 minutes of Shavasana if you can, or as long as you can. And if, if it's only two minutes, if it's only 30 seconds, that's okay too. And just take some time to acknowledge your practice and the commitment for taking time for yourself. I'm gonna leave you in Shavasana. Thank you so much for practicing and making it to your mat today. Today, as you go forward, may you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, peace in your heart. Namaste.